I was diagnosed with glaucoma when I was 15. I was put out of school quite a bit because I was in and out for surgeries. And um, it was rough. I'm kind of very involved with the blind community and, you know, low vision community in Marin County. And uh, I hope that with the Glaucoma uh, Research Foundation, uh, we can work together. I started having headaches and I thought I needed a new prescription for my glasses. And my mom just had a feeling and decided to take me to an um, eye specialist. I always wanted to know more about glaucoma and about how it affects the African American community because it's six to eight times more likely to be found African Americans than Caucasian. Five, six years ago, I was doing a routine eye examination and my ophthalmologist said, I think you're a glaucoma candidate or suspect. Suspect is the word she used. And I went away and I was kind of depressed for a while. And that was a little tough, wondering if, gee, this is getting worse, am I gonna go blind? You don't know. I googled glaucoma, and the first thing that came up was the Glaucoma Research Foundation. So we called up and said, I'd like to get in touch with you because I feel it's important to raise public awareness about this. The population is aging, and as that happens, the prevalence of degenerative diseases of the central nervous system is going to increase dramatically. Glaucoma has great similarity with other diseases of the central nervous system, such as Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease or even Lou Gehrig's disease. And so it makes a lot of sense then to approach glaucoma as a disease uh, a neurological problem, a disease of the brain, and therefore having uh, recruiting neurobiologists to work on it. From the beginning, the Glaucoma Research Foundation was all about innovation. If you look at the type of research we do, it is innovative. If you look at our catalyst for a cure, it's a very unique approach uh, to bringing collaborative investigation to the field of glaucoma instead of individual scientists working uh, by themselves. Uh, it's innovative in terms of looking outside the field of glaucoma for people in other areas like neuroscience and genetics and molecular biology that can then bring their expertise to glaucoma to look at it in perhaps new and different ways. The Catalyst for a Cure is a fantastic opportunity to break away from the mold of the lone scientist working in his or her own laboratory uh, to bring people together and force them to collaborate as a team. This collaborative effort was different in that there were actually four labs working together and we had to put into place a number of methods for allowing us to interact together. Um, and so we, had, we make a real effort to um, several times a year to get together um, for informal meetings where we visit each other's labs, we find a common central place that we all travel to. Um, so by doing that several times over the course of a year it allows us to set goals that we then come and, and um, talk about at the next meeting. We are continuously having to set benchmarks for success and we will do things that the four labs could only do uh, together, not projects that could be done individually. It's nice to think that what we're doing in our laboratory benches has direct impact on someone's well-being. first things we set out to do was to study the large-scale genetic changes associated with the progression of glaucoma. That work has now been uh, partially completed and is ready for publication. And now what we're doing is we're taking the information from that large-scale genetic study and we're starting to break it down into different categories of hypotheses. People have been working a very long time to try to either control the pressure or to control how the cells respond to pressure in some way to prevent them from dying. And what we've seen though, I think, which is uh, uh, very exciting, it's also great news for patients with glaucoma, is that that process where the cells actually die or become uh, 
basically succumb to the forces that are there in the eye, that process is a very delayed process. In other words, people probably begin to lose their vision well before those neurons are ever destroyed. What that means is that we can think about targeting the disease in a different way. We know that there have to be the susceptibility genes for glaucoma. We'll have genes that are linked to the disease and then hopefully be able to identify points in that particular pathway that can be um, points of intervention. The need is great to come to a cure or a therapy soon. The challenge is to get the story out. So we need a lot more people to understand the importance of this work, why it really is truly groundbreaking and different. And I think when they understand that, they're going to want to be a part of it. The next step for the Glaucoma Research Foundation is to get more people involved. We are at a critical time in glaucoma research, and there isn't a moment to lose. You can get involved by urging your friends to get tested, referring people to our website for more information, and by joining the Catalyst for a Cure campaign. Why not make GRF and the Catalyst for a Cure campaign, make it your number one charitable priority for the next three years? That's not too much to ask. You know? Whatever level you're able to give, make it your number one priority. To everything, turn, turn, turn. There is a season, turn, turn, turn. And a time to every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to reap, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time.